Hello, my name is Alistair Madcroft and I'm going to be walking you through the steps for cloning, compiling and running MOM6. We're going to be following instructions which are given at the MOM6 examples wiki. The URL is given at the bottom of the screen. If, like me, you uh, can't remember URLs, uh, we can turn to Google and do a search for MOM6 wiki. And the first link will most likely be the page we're looking for, which looks like this. There's a lot of information on this wiki. Uh, we're only going to be looking at the Getting Started pages today, <coughs> which give the instructions we're going to follow chronologically for downloading, compiling, and running a test case. The uh, tool we use for version control is Git, and we host the code at GitHub. Uh, if you don't have an account on GitHub, uh, we we'd recommend, you don't have to, but we recommend signing up for a free GitHub account, which will let you collaborate with us more easily. And if you do so, then you'll need to follow these instructions for setting up your Git client, uh, installing SSH keys, etc. so it all works for you. We're not going to do that today. I've already done it on this machine, but we're actually going to follow the instructions for cloning without a GitHub account, because it lets me explain how things work a bit better. So there are the instructions. We're going to open up a terminal. And the first instruction, the first command is to clone the mom examples repository, which uh, is pretty self-evident, git clone, there's the URL for the repository. And then the last argument there is mom examples, which is the name of the directory that's being created. Um, git is telling us it's cloning into that directory. Uh, then that name can be anything you like, but I'm using mom examples here uh, because that's what we use in the documentation on the wiki. So it'll be least, less confusing if you use that name as well for the time being. Uh, the next command is to cd into mom 6 example source, and I'll explain the directory structure later. Um, here you'll see, find some empty directories. So for example, there's mom6, and it's empty. Uh, the next steps are, are in, uh, actually do the population of those directories for us. And I'm just going to cut and paste all those commands. It won't take very long, so I'll paste those. And so what this is doing is... Uh, uh, cloning these individual repositories into those subdirectories. So the source code for MOM6, FMS, and these other components are all submodules of this uh, MOM6 examples uh, super repository. Okay, there's the last one. Okay, now we're going to scroll down a little bit and we need to be in MOM6 examples according to that uh, um, step there. So let's go back up one. And we just need to do this set of commands here, submodule in and submodule update. Uh, because what that does is check out the appropriate version of each of those submodules that are required to get the particular sets of answers that are, that are recorded in the MOM6 examples repository. Okay, these instructions we're about to come to on the next page. So we're now, so we're done on this page apart from this, and I'm going to back up to the main getting started pages and start following those instructions now. So there's a submodule in it that we've already done, a bit of explanation about what that was doing, and then we now, now move on to downloading the build tools and templates. So we're in the MOM6 examples already, so what we have to do now is build, is create a build directory, I'll cd into it and then clone one more repository. Which will be very quick. So there we are, another repository. And now finally, uh, we have everything we need. So if we just go back up one level and do a tree minus D. There we are. So fully populated working directory of MOM6 examples. Okay, so um, the examples we're going to really run today we do not have any input data, so we're going to skip the downloading of input data um, and move on to compiling. Now, um, compiling uses uh, some various tools. The tools, the tools uh, we've just downloaded into MKMF, and the instructions are um, predominantly for environments which we use at GFDL, but we have got a page here for setting up the GNU toolchain under the Ubuntu uh, title here, and I'm going to follow those for this um, virtual machine that I'm using today. So the very first thing we have to do is install all the software we're going to use. Uh, so some of the scripts use CSH, the C shell, and 
also we need make g fortran fortran open mpi bin lib open mpi dev lib cdf dev and cdf bin so let me just type a password now that's going to install all that software for us so I should say that this is a clean uh, Debian install uh, which I'm running under a virtual machine on my laptop so this won't take too long there we are done okay so the next step is to build create an empty environment file which I'm just going to and paste in there like that done now this is the main uh, this is the the, uh, the important steps here so we're going to create a, a, a compile directory um, under the build directory for, um, and we're building using the GNU so we like to, I, I like to um, uh, label this directory as GNU we're building the shared code uh, in reproduction mode the next command let's uh, Put that in here. I'm going to do this in full screen so you can see it. The next command um, goes into uh, it's using a subshell, this, this uh, angular uh, uh, parenthesis, cds into that build directory GNU shared repo. It removes a file just in case it exists, which is a, a, a legacy issue. Then it runs this command list paths. And list path takes an argument, which is a set, of, which is a set of directories or source files, and it's going to create a file path names, which we just deleted. That the next command mkmf will then use to create a make file. And we've already, I'm also passing in some other options here to tell it to use MPI libraries, netcdf, um, and other things that FMS needs to know when it's building. So there we are. It's now made the make file, and I can show that to you if I just have a look in build new shared repo make file there it is okay in one line um, just to let you know what the rest of the directory looks like um, let's have a look in there um, so there's the path names file and there's the make file okay so back to the instructions the next line copy and paste. This then does the same thing in a subshell, moves it, uh, CDs into build GNU shared repo, and then runs this environment file, which was actually blank in our case, is empty. Uh, this is a trick I we use so that the subshell can then have a different environment to the shell you're working in. And then it uh, invokes make with these arguments netcdf3, that means to use version 3 of netcdf, repo1 means repro use the reproduction, reproducing options um, of the code and then specifies the, the Fortran compiler and the C compiler and the target is libfms which is going to be a library of all of the shared code that we're going to be building MOM6 on top of. Now this is going to take a few minutes um, but I've started it there and I'm now going to just walk you through the MOM6 examples directory in another tab um, so bear with me. So whilst that's compiling let's have a look at what it's actually doing so this is mom 6 examples work workspace. We created the build directory in there. There's the GNU directory. There's the end file and the shared directory. And finally the repo directory. And if you look in there, there are some object files appearing as the model compiles. And we we can go and watch that. It's currently doing the MPP domains. It's a big one big file. Oh, come on. And the problem with virtual machines is they can be as slow as the laptop you're running them on. Oh, there we go. So You'll see some new files have appeared. So this is going to come compiling. I mean, so in the meantime, whilst that's that's uh, 
finishing, I'll just go back and show you a bit more about the Mars 6 examples. So the way we've set things up in the in the instructions for the wiki are not the only way you have to set things up. The build directory can be wherever you like it uh, to be. Um, even the uh, location of the uh, uh, the MKF tools and the source directories can actually be moved if you want to. Uh, we like the setup just because it, it means you have a, space, a workspace that is not going to be cluttered with other stuff. Um, if you want to have multiple versions of this, you just create a new workspace. And uh, now the multi examples has um, uh, the build directory just created, but it automatically has um, configuration directories, which are the, most of these directories. The ocean only directory is the one we'll be using today. In there, you'll find quite a few example experiments. And if you go into the experiment we're going to be running today, you'll find it has just the input files which we need for running that example. There's no input data, it's all parameters in this example. Um, we can um, examine those later. Um, some, some, uh, some examples do need input data. For example, if we go into the global AL model, uh, the global AL experiment in Z coordinates, has some directories uh, which have links to the input data there. Now those are broken links because I haven't installed the input data. And that's how we normally set up those experiments. And then the other thing we just point out in the tools directory, uh, in the monster examples, is that the tools directory has some um, packages installed under it for your convenience. And also has some scripts which we use on a fairly regular basis for, for um, generating automatic analysis and so on. And these tools are mostly standalone and can be used um, and played around with um, at your leisure. Now let's see how that compiler is going. It's finished. So now let's have a look in that build directory. So GNU share repo. So the last file that was created was this libfms. So that is a library file containing all these objects um, that we're then going to we're going to use for linking later. So now back up to Mon6 examples and let's go back to the instructions. So we've just built the FMS library and now we're going to do a very similar step for building the Mon6 itself. So we're going to create a build directory. This time it's build GNU ocean only because we're building an ocean only executable and again we're in reproduction mode. And then let's make this full screen again so we can see these instructions. So this is very similar to the previous command, but this time the list paths has um, the as a source set of sources the source code for MOM6. It has a certain set of, um, and we'll go into more detail, detail later, a certain set of sub set of some directories in config source, and then all of the sort directories in the SRC directory. And then uh, then is using the same same templates and so on for the mkmf command, but this time the target is uh, mom6. So I'm going to start that off, and this will take a bit longer. Sorry, the actual compile, the compile will take a bit longer. My mistake. So let's just get the compile command. Let's um, again make that last. So paste. Yeah, so this is going to take a while. Um, so if I could just uh, go back to this list paths command, I'll just explain a bit more what's going on there. So this. Um, this argument, set of arguments to list paths there, has source mom6 and then config source dynamic and config source solo driver. So let's look at what those are doing. So if I go into source mom6, these are the directories here. And in config source, well, let's just do it via a tree. Config source has several subdirectories, couple driver um, and solo driver and iSolo driver are drivers that uh, are exclusive from each other. So solo driver means we can just run the ocean model in, its, in solo mode, ocean only mode. Um, if we're running anything involving the other components, sea ice, land, atmosphere, uh, we have to use a couple driver. 
Um, the so iSolo driver is a special case which is for um, standalone ice shelf um, cavity model. The other directories here are um, dynamic and dynamic symmetric, and I'll just show you what they have in them. Um, config source dynamic has a single file memory.h, and it actually has a set of uh, silly macros which will cause a fatal compile error if you actually do the, to try to change them. For example, define ni global nonsense and ni global so just to make sure that we don't accidentally use this. The, um, uh, the the reason for this file is that if you want to build a static executable which is with a fixed size, you can instead of you referring to the dynamic uh, the dynamic um, source file memory.h at this step here, you can just simply remove it and point instead to um, a memory.h which has a known uh, fixed size in it. And then one such example is in the experiment we're using, going to use today, but I'm not building static executable, which is a notion only double inch gyre. And you'll see that there is a mom, mom memory.h in there that has real values in there. And this, this, this uh, macro static memory is set, which will um, force uh, MOM6 to build in static mode with fixed sized arrays. This is something we do for, si uh, for efficiency sometimes on some platforms, but no, it's not necessary on, on many platforms. And it's a lot easier to have a dynamic executable that you can reuse for many different examples. Okay, so uh, we're in this uh, double gyre example, and I'll now walk you through some of the files which we're going to be using in the test. Um, every um, directory needs an input, a name list, which has a bare minimum set of parameters, which are, in the case of MOM6, uh, a list of the files which actually have the real parameters in. We like to have our experiment, our parameters in, in split into two files, or you can use as many as you want. Uh, a MOM input, which is a set of canonical parameters uh, for this experiment. So here's an example of this using the MOM6 parameter format. Um, value pairs with documentation, units, etc. And if there's another file, the other file is MOM override, which is mostly blank for these examples, or not always. And in, in, this, in this file, you can um, provide extra parameters or alternative parameters to the canonical. This is a nice way to organize perturbation experiments. So you have all of the main the main unchanged parameters or master parameters in one file and then small small lists of perturbation parameters in another. Okay, so that's the mom input and mom override. Mom memory I explained earlier, we will link to if you don't want to use uh, dynamic memory. And then these other files are actually generated, these mom parameter doc files are generated by the model uh, when the model runs and we record them here so that we can check uh, that we aren't uh, uh, changing anything when we're doing our tests. Another file is the dynamic table. It's just use it, um, this is an FMS um, package. Um, we have this ability to generate um, multiple files with different uh, kinds of time averaging at different frequencies um, with different variables grouped in different ways. And we can also generate uh, files with day num uh, years and dates and so on inside them. This is uh, something that uh, has been documented by uh, the FMS, somewhere on the FMS websites. And uh, I should make sure we have a link to that in the wiki. Um, let's see what else do we have in here. So there also the, motion, the model also generates um, some numbers that we like to record for regression testing. Um, here's an example. And these are very simple um, metrics, uh, as you can human readable, um, and we are these metrics have been set up to be somewhat sensitive. Uh, it's very hard to have a different solution that does not show up as a difference in some of these, in these metrics here. In particular, the fractional mass error is a non-dimensional, um, very very small number, and if you have a single bit that's changed in the mass field of the model, you are very likely to have a different number there. So that's uh, everything in this example. This is a very simple configuration. It's a stack shell of water configuration with two layers. Um, we can look at some of those parameters. We'll look at one parameter doc short. 
short output is a is as concise a list of parameters as we can make. It is the non-default parameters. So a lot of parameters have default values. For example, this flag adiabatic, the default is false. And so for that reason, it is listed in this file because it is not default. It is true. Um, if I go to monfront.call, you'll see that there are a lot of, let's, say, let's find some parameters, a lot of parameters that are whose default true is the value they have in this case. So the split does not appear in the, in the short file. So this is the short file. Um, so this has, normally we have the geometry at the top, so nk equals two, there's two layers. It's an adiabatic model, and it's actually stacked out of water, so it doesn't have anything to nax. And these uh, parameters are fairly, hopefully, self-explanatory. Uh, at least, at least they're, if not, it's, they're explained by the comments. Okay, let's see how the compiler is doing. It's finished. There we are. So we're now going to go to the next step in the process, which is to run the model. So we're going to CD into Ocean Double Gyre. Which we were exploring just a moment ago. And we're going to make a directory restart. This is just to avoid an error because the model always writes a restart, or well, at least it doesn't have to, but by default does, write a restart file when it finishes. And uh, we typically put that restart file into a directory called restart. And if the directory doesn't exist, you'll get a um, a fatal error rather than a successful end. And now I'm going to finally run the model. And let's go full screen for this. And we get a whole load of output and you'll see the model's ticking away there. Uh, these, this is output is fairly similar to this what you saw in the ocean stats file which we used for regression. This um, total energy line is particularly useful. It has an actual number, dimensional amount of energy, uh, density, I think, or total amount of energy. Uh, but it also has a um, hexadecimal number, which is a hash of the actual bits. And if the model ever produces a different solution, that th those numbers would be different. It's an easy, quick and easy way for you to check whether you've got the same answer. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that string there for, for the end of the solution. Copy. And to prove that the model reproduces across p count, I've just run that model with four processors, four virtual processors on my one processor laptop. And now I'm going to run it with one processor, which will probably be a bit faster because I only have one processor. And you see it running through again. And it's finished. And now let's paste that number I just copied. And you'll see it's exactly the same. So there we are. Demonstration that the model reproduces across process accounts. Okay, so that's it. We've um, in, we've cloned, we've compiled, and we've run a short test case. Um, Alex, um, it wasn't too hard, I hope, for you to follow. And uh, um, we'll be providing some more tutorials on how to do some more complicated stuff in the future, and including analyzing the output.